Hey, good evening, Life Church family. Thanks for clicking in. I just want to take a few minutes uh, to do a devotional with you, if you would. Uh, join in with me. Uh, take it as a privilege for you to join in here, and let's just have a moment of God-focused intentionality, of encouragement, of Scripture, and, and just even worship. Uh, what would he have us to say today? Well, I want to share with you, I'm right here in the family center, the second floor where, where our kids hang out a lot. There's a lot that's been going on here at the church, even though we haven't been able to gather as a church community like normal. I know you've missed it. I've talked to people as you have. I've seen on Facebook and say, I can't wait until we gather again. It's amazing how something like this can be flipped on us and how it can change our perspective at times. And, and just remember, God's the best flipper of the script there ever was. He loves, if we would trust him, to turn what has been difficult or bad into something better, into something good. And you know that, but I'm just here to remind you, excuse the phone noise in the background, I'm just here to remind you of that today because I'm just thinking of, of some things here because I know we're excited, maybe more than we have in a long time as a church, and that's not just our church, but throughout the land, of the time we're going to get to gather back. I can just imagine what that party is going to be like. What is God, what are the testimonies we're going to hear among churches throughout the land, the world, when things are able to come back to a little bit of normalcy? Uh, and I don't know when that is, you don't, but I'm anticipating, are you, for God to do something even more? Because he's preparing us to be strong while we're separate, right? That's what you guys are doing what's what I'm doing. We're learning that we can still stay strong, but even better when we come together. Even better when we come together. And so I think in times like this, it's kind of like, well, let's, let me look at a scripture for you with you. You know the scripture well, Hebrews 10, 25. And uh, it may depend upon your translation as to how it's worded, but it's, it's pretty close for everyone. Uh, it says, that scripture, which we quote a lot for church gatherings, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That's a scripture we say a lot, Hebrews 10, uh, 25. And that scripture reminds us why we gather. Now, you and I have both been around, but sometimes people have used that scripture to beat over someone's head to feel guilty about not attending or being a part of the church. Uh, that's not what we're talking about here, are we? We're saying, wow, isn't that something to look forward to? And I'm sure that's the way God was wanting it to be heard, that we should not forsake this because the goodness that's involved, the goodness that is there when we are able to come together and we're of like mind and our attitudes are right and they're surrendered to God and surrendered to what he wants to do and unified in faith, the amazing things that he does in us, in relationships, in uh, our time of the preaching of the word, in our time of the altar, in the time of, of, of praying for each other, it increases. And so sometimes something like this is like when I was a kid, and I'm sure you too. Whenever you said you you were complaining about something and complaining about something, and sometimes as a parent, or maybe you've done this, done reverse psychology. Like when I said to my parents, I'm going to run away. And I kept on threatening. And one day mom said, okay, run away. I looked at her, but without trying to show her, I was looking at her. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Mom, that is not the way you're supposed to answer this. And it changed a lot. And she test, I tested her and she let me test her. So I got my little package of stuff, as you, many of you have too. And I headed out that door. And she waved bye-bye. And I was like, I don't like this feeling, do I? I don't like what that did inside. That's not the approach I was uh, expecting, I wanted to control the situation. I wanted to complain. I wanted to be negative. And I went down that road and I went a couple blocks. I'm looking over and I'm like, any moment she should be crying and begging me to come back. And I, she's like, bye son, see you later. And I did like many of us have or our kids have. I went down, acted like I went down. I came back the other block in my little small town. Thankfully it was a little safer than a lot of places. And I snuck back in the house. She knew I was gonna do this. She was in the other room on the phone. Probably saw me walking and probably faked it. I don't know. But I'm sneaking back in my bedroom. And I'm like, this is not okay. It I, don't, I don't think I ever threatened that again. Um, kind of Bugs Bunny would do that where he'd get in uh, a twirl with somebody. Yes, no, yes, no. Then he'd go, no, yes. And then they'd reverse their answer. And right now, when 
someone takes something from you, the choice, it changes perspective. And we often talk in our churches about, hey, other countries, other countries, they don't get... Right now we're getting a small, and it is still a small taste of what many of our brothers and sisters have experienced in the church in many countries throughout history. I'm asking you to not let go of this. Just like when your child gets a hold of a moment where they appreciate something, don't let go of it. You want your child to remember, to learn from it. I would ask you to pray to not forget what you're feeling about the gathering because what's going to happen is we're going to get back together one day. And what's going to happen when we get back in the routine of life? And you had to put a stake in the ground and say, I won't go back to that. I won't go back to that old way of thinking of just deja vu. I've almost got to because God wants me to. Don't fall for that if you have. And um, I'm excited that God is probably opening up eyes for what he wants to do in and through the church. And I believe when we grab hold of the church arising in this moment, that amazing great things can happen. So I want you to, if you would, just pray with me, would you? I want to pray that you, me, and even those that are not part of this listening right now, but our church, may we grab hold of the heart and never let go. When we come back together, may we never let go of the heart of the church and what God wants to do in us. Because when we come back, I'm expecting a Holy Spirit, God-led party. Aren't you? I'm expecting some good stuff. And it's going to be supernatural, the love, the encouragement, the word spoken, the faith. I'm believing for that. Are you? I'm believing for the church to rise up in this time of trouble, of, of, of distraction, whatever it is, whatever word you'd give for it. May the church arise. And I'm going to pray for you. And after this, um, in the comment section, uh, we'll have a, I'm going to have a song. One of my favorite songs because let the church arise. Uh, when I think about the church, and I just think about the mission of the church when we get done here today. Let it stick with you. And I just want to pray for you, if you would. Lord, I just pray for my brothers and sisters who are with me in spirit right now. And uh, I pray that each of us, Lord, we would grab hold of your heart. Lord, we want your church to arise. We want it to stay and start in us, but we want it to be contagious and to jump onto our other brothers and sisters. Unify us, dear God. We are anticipating that you not only use us now, but the time we can gather what you're going to do. So, Lord, use us now. We're not waiting for later. We're not waiting for that time we gather, but we are anticipating what you are doing to create an amazing unity, spiritual unity for that time we come back together and celebrate your name. Prepare us even now. Prepare our families. Help us, Lord, to prepare our families as we worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you guys. Have a good weekend. God bless you.